If you have a brand new Canon M50 Mark II or you're looking to get your hands on one and you're ready to shoot some YouTube videos, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I have mine set up so you can copy exactly what my settings are or tweak them from there. So let's dive into my menu here. We're gonna go through the actual menu settings and then I'll show you my actual settings for shooting like my ISO f-stop frame rate and all of that stuff depending on how I'm set up here in my little tiny office. So one of the first things that I noticed when I turned on my Canon M50 Mark II is this horrible white menu situation that they have going on. We're going to change that right off the bat. This is the guided menu. Press the menu button on the camera, go all the way over to the right to that icon with the camera and the person. This is the display level settings. You're gonna choose okay where it says menu display guided just tap that and move it over to standard then set okay and you'll see if you open your menu back up that you're back into this normal canon looking menu situation that i am much more used to and highly prefer now make sure that you're in movie mode in the mode dial. That's the one that looks like a little movie camera. And then you're going to go to that first menu. That's the one with the camera icon at the top. So right here on page one, we're going into shooting mode and I have mine set to the camera with a little M icon. So I'm able to control the manual settings of the camera when I'm shooting videos. Choose okay. We're gonna come back over to movie record quality. And in this menu, this is where you can choose whether you're going to shoot in 4K or 1080, uh, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second. I choose 1080, that's FHD, 29.97. So that's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. It's a pretty standard setting. I'm a basic girl like that. Back to our menu under sound recording, I have mine set on manual because I'm using an external microphone, the Rode Wireless Go. So I wanna have a little bit more control over the actual audio. So this is something you are definitely going to have to play with. You want your audio to not be peaking at all, which means where it's way up in the red, where the zero is, you want it to be sort of just touching the green when you're talking normally. It depends on your whole entire recording setup. So make sure that you test this, take a couple of different shots at different levels with maybe with your microphone in a different spot and see how it actually sounds in the computer when you're actually viewing your video files. Now I've only ever used just a couple of different mics for my YouTube videos, but I really like the simplicity of the Rode Wireless Go. It's easy to use, it's affordable, and I have a video coming up soon on how to get the best possible audio quality using a microphone like this. So coming over to page three, I've been using auto white balance, which I think is okay for me for right now. I haven't played around with the picture style yet, so that is set to auto as well. Coming over to page five, autofocus method is set to face plus tracking. And on page eight, I have image stabilizer mode disabled because I mostly shoot on a tripod. I don't need the image stabilization, but it may be something that you want to experience experiment with, especially if you're vlogging and you're moving around handheld a lot. Coming over to page nine down on HDMI info display, I have mine set to with info. And the reason why I wanna point this out is because you can use this camera with clean HDMI output for live streaming and Zoom calls with an HDMI capture card. I covered that in, I think my last video. So I'll link to that up in the cards. But if you're like me and you switch back and forth between using your camera for Zoom calls and videos and you're wondering why it's not working for you. It might just be that you forgot to switch your HDMI info display. That happens to me all the time. Now, when it comes to actual shooting settings, again, make sure the camera is in movie mode on the mode dial. Now, if I'm using my Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens, then my f-stop is going to usually be around 1.8 or two-ish. If I go down to the lowest f-stop on this lens, then I start to worry that my nose will be in focus, but my hair won't be in focus. So I wanna have just a little more depth than that. 
And when I'm using the kit lens, I put it at the lowest f-stop at 3.5. And then I want my ISO to be wherever it needs to be so that that little exposure slider down there is right in the middle or I usually go just a little bit above the middle. So the ISO is like the number that changes the most in my setup because it really depends how much light is coming in through this window, how much light I have coming at me, which lights I have set up or where I'm actually shooting. But I'm always at 1 60th for my shutter speed. So you can think of that like it's double the frame rate. My frame rate is 30 frames per second. 60 is double the 30. So if I was shooting at 60 frames per second, then I would want to double that and be at 1 1 20th. Right? I 100% love and recommend this Sigma 16 millimeter lens. It's a great way to upgrade your M50 Mark II. I think the camera itself is such an affordable, but really good, um, you know, entry level, enthusiast level camera. And when you throw this Sigma lens on there, it really has, you know, an upgraded look to it. So no matter which lens I'm using, generally I go with the lowest f-stop that I can while still fully being in focus. That's going to lead to a better image quality overall because you're letting the most light into the lens. If you're using the kit lens on the M50 Mark II and you don't see 3.5 as the lowest uh, aperture that you can go, just make sure that your focal length is set to 15. I usually just have one light on me right behind the camera. I like to keep one light behind my computer screen so it's always there for a Zoom call or a live stream or whatever, and then I have another box light that I move around wherever I need it. Now, I made a few more gear upgrades a couple of months ago. That's when I picked up the Canon M50 Mark II. I also got the M6 Mark II and a few other things. I've never been the type of, you know, go out and buy the newest thing type of YouTube creator. So if you are also a budget conscious content creator, that's a mouthful, a budget conscious content creator, I queued up that video for you here. If you want to upgrade here and there, then that video is for you.